it doesn't mean that much to be to, to have this sexual activity what is it it's just that don't get all worked up and it's not the end of the world I'm fine I'm fine you know so I I gave myself that gift when I first heard this then I also felt I knew that I was having um, I knew that I was made that I told myself I was made pregnant and you know I'm almost 60 years old I mean this is like oh, how did that happen but you know they could do this these sorts of things and I felt the night twice that they pulled uh, the fetus out it was it was it was very painful it was in the middle of the night I could feel it. and uh, so yeah there was fi there's physical even though you don't see blood there's still the physical pain from something that happened like that. And how did you deal with that? I know all the stress dealing with the spirit people at one time gave you shingles. Isn't that yeah, right? I did. So how did you cope easy. with all that? You know, I just do. You know, I try to keep um, a perspective. You know what really keeps me going? Jim, thanks the for the plight team. of those people yeah. on the other side. Yeah. Because my life is a cakewalk compared to theirs. Well, you said yeah. that you've also had to face a reptilian sorcerer, but that you oh, were able to... Protect yourself and defend yourself uh, through a, a a force field that you've been able to put around yourself through breathing exercises. Yeah, it's, it's a form of shielding, using protection, using you can use if you if you the white light or but it's it's more than just a visualization. Um, I d I sort of describe it as you you know it's almost like getting psyched for the big game. You know, it's like. I don't even know how to put it in words, but it's like feeling this this barrier, this shield, this this force field around you, and then really pumping it up. I uh, I think I was able to fend this one off. It was he was pretty strong, and the next day he said to me, um, "You have rare gifts," because they always talk on my recorders, and uh, and I think he left after that, but. Again, there have been times when I'm just out of it, sleeping, and I know I just get yanked out, and I find out about it later. So it doesn't always work. You even found out about your own death. <laughs> you said you heard about your own death. Yes, I have. I you don't really want to go into that. Okay. <laughs> not this month, is it? Uh, not, I don't, no I just, comment? I no comment. Oh, my God. Now, you have a friend named Bill who died... <clears throat> And yeah. his death was very traumatic for you. Yeah. Why was that? What happened? Well, he was out down in our little house. We have a little guest house. He um, passed. We didn't realize he was he had died. He died down in that guest house, and he was there for two days. And anyway, so that was traumatic just on that level, breaking into the house and finding him. So, um, but you know, he looked peaceful enough, and it's a natural thing. You know, so I, that doesn't really, up, it's not upsetting to me, but I decided to get it onto the recorder and see how he was doing on the other side because I can talk to the spirit, the people on the other side, and I also speak to myself. And when I reversed myself, my responses in reverse were so shocking to me. I was, I was almost screaming, I should slap you. You make me sick. And I was just like, I didn't know what that was meaning, and then it turned out they, uh, the three of them who were here at the time, reptilians, said, yeah, we were hiding in the house when he died, and we grabbed him, and we ate him, and we left Barney down there to clean up the mess. That's what they said to me, and I was, I wept for days, because I, to die alone was one thing, bad enough. And then to wake up and face that, I mean, nobody is really dead. Nobody, every, all these people, those people who are eaten are sleeping under the net. They are in a sleep state. They are fine. They will rise up and they will be fine. But it's just that trauma of, of you know, here we're thinking we're going to heaven or something. And to wake up to face three reptiles, who then probably hanged him. He probably was hanged. I don't know how they killed him. I didn't ask that. You have another friend um, who you call Roger. That's not his actual name. Mm -hmm. 
Peter has stayed with you for a while. He was in, uh, well, maybe describe his case. You said his reversals were horrific. Could you talk about Roger's case? Because he stayed here in this, with you as well. Yes, he, uh, he came out because he would, he lived in um, Texas and he would run voice activated tape recorders at night and just had the most horrendous sounds on these recorders and voices and uh, he was looking for somebody to listen to them and he came to Tucson to talk to Wendell Stevens and Wendell just wasn't, in, he, he just wasn't ready to foot all that. But it, through the grapevine he found out that I listened to tapes and he came down here, and what I heard was just awful. It was just awful. And we spent the next couple of months doing everything we could to try to keep them away from him. And at the time, I just did not, I, I still didn't know just uh, about the nature of the, this reality, but nothing we did really helped very much or for very long, which was another rug being pulled out from under me, you know, I mean, we did Reiki, we had a ceremony, we did holy water, we did, he became born again Christian, not here, but when he traveled, he became a born again Christian, and seriously, I mean, truly, and uh, a full immersion baptism, he had the whole congregation praying for him, covering himself in the blood of Jesus as protection, and he was attacked right in the church during all the middle of all this. I mean, it just, it, it, we did technologies, we did lead, we did garlic, we did uh, vinyl, magnetics, magnet. I well, mean, what were they doing it. to him when he was here? What were they doing? What kind of well, attacks? Well, they would, um, other than the rapes, which, are, you know, they're collecting, uh, rape is one of the ways they feed, by the way. They call that alien honey. They, when they're in the process of raping somebody, they are ingesting your energy in that form. They would also cut into his head. They put in implants into his nose, into the sinus cavity, into his ears. They would, uh, that way they could monitor or give him the visions and the voices that they wanted him to hear to keep him in this tied in with them state. They, could, they can manipulate his dreams, they dreamscape. Then they would also d dig into his head. They would extract fluids. Uh, spinal fluids. They feed on different organs, body organs. They will su they will use like almost um, the needles um, to extract. Uh, and now this is all astral. They extract fluids, body fluids. They when they ingest people, they're not just eating meat. They are eating. They what they're eating is uh, there's memory in our bones. They, they ingest elements, emotions, they, all these different things. Otherwise, they could just clone and eat people. You know, clone and eat and clone and eat. But that's not enough for them. The, the human body, when they ingest it, they take in much of what we are or aspects of ourselves, not our true spirit or soul, but they will absorb our essences. So it's not just me to them. They, in, when they extract spinal fluids, which they do to, from a lot of people, if you have bumps or funny things going on behind your neck or in the back of your head, they sell that. It's synthesized and it is a drug. It's like they're cocaine. They transport bodies, body parts, and astral humans to Mars and to Orion, and they're tra they traffic in these. It's a big, big commerce. In, uh, we are their whole life. Orion, Mars, and, and this, which are their two main bases of operation. They come from Orion. Mars they own. They have huge detention centers and huge meat lockers. Most of the people who die are taken to Mars and put, and they have hanging pens where they then kill them again astrally in these hanging pens. I think they probably are raping people while they're getting ready to be hanged because that is tremendous fear and they ingest that energy. They will torture little children in front of their parents so that they can get that energy. I mean, there's no depths that this race will not stoop to. They have no compassion 